Get strong. Get strong. Baby found in dumpster becomes millionaire technology entrepreneur and inventor. Freddie had been found abandoned as a newborn baby next to a dumpster in rural Florida. Nathan Figgis was a maintenance worker and handyman, and Betty Mae Figgis, a farm worker, found him and adopted him. Kids used to bully me and call me, dumpster baby, trash can boy, nobody wants you, you're dirty, he says. I remember getting off the school bus sometimes, and kids used to just come behind and grab me and throw me in a trash can and laugh at me. It reached a point where his father would wait for him at the bus stop and walk him home. The after-school program director noticed Freddie's skill and employed him at the city hall to fix broken computers for $12, £9, an hour. A couple of years later, a coding opportunity arose. The community needed a system to check the city's water pressure gauges, and a company had quoted $600,000 pounds, to develop a computer program. I built that program exactly to the specifications that they needed. I didn't get paid $600,000, I got my regular paycheck and went home. He was only 15, but he now decided to leave school and start his own computing business. A couple of years later, his father started rapidly developing Alzheimer's disease and would wander off without anyone knowing where he was. This prompted Freddy's first profitable invention. So I got my dad's shoes, I cut the sole of the shoe open, I built the circuit board and placed it inside of the shoe with a 90 megahertz speaker, a microphone and a wide area network card, says Freddy. I integrated that with my laptop, this was before Apple Maps or Google Maps, and I integrated that through the TomTom, Garmin platform. My father could actually wander off, and I could press a button on my laptop and say, hey dad, where are you? I would come in as a loudspeaker on his shoe, and he would say, Fred, I don't know where I am. Freddy could then trace his whereabouts via the GPS tracker and go and fetch him. He says he had to do this about eight times. Freddy had sold his shoe tracker invention for $2.2 million, 1.6 million pounds. At the age of 22, Freddy built a smart glucometer that instantly shares a person's blood sugar level with their closest relative and adds the readings to their electronic health record, which a doctor can view. If a person's blood sugar level is abnormal, it sends out an amber alert notification as a warning. Freddy was aware that many parts of rural America had no access to the 2G or 3G network. He wanted to bring up-to-date communications to these rural areas. In 2008 made the first of many applications for an FCC, Federal Communications Commission, license to start his own telecoms company. I had to petition to show that the bigger telecom carriers are not going to come in and invest their infrastructure into a rural area with populations of less than 1,000, he says. It wasn't easy. In fact, he says, it took 394 attempts and cost a huge amount of money. But in 2011, at the age of 21, Freddie became the youngest telecoms operator in the US. According to NBC News, Figus Communication remains the only black-owned telecommunications company in the country. In 2014, Freddie launched a smartphone, the Figus F1, with a device that detects motion and switches to safe mode above 10 miles per hour, preventing people from texting while driving. The Figus F3, which went on sale in 2019, contains a chip designed to enable wireless charging whenever the phone is within 5 meters of a super base charger, a device that has been awaiting approval by the FCC. As well as his businesses, he runs a foundation that invests in education and healthcare projects and helps disadvantaged children and families. Recent schemes have included donating bicycles to children in foster care and PPE to people on the coronavirus pandemic's front line.